So to put a short, you know, exactly what I said, I put a bolt there. I'm going to put a nut and a washer there. I just took it off because what happened was I, I ended up having to um, weld it because it's either I was going to weld it to this nut and then if you adjust it, the whole thing would have to spin. So then you got to undo that. I just said, nah, you know what? I'm just, even though this was original, I didn't want to mess it up just in case. But uh, I decided to weld it because when I was impacting this with the gun, because that's generally speaking how you're going to do it, it, it kind of, it moved, you know, it forced itself to move. So I just tightened the shit out of it. I welded it, you know, I got it in the right place and I welded it. And now that when I bolt this on, it's not going to waver. It's not going to, it's not going to move at all, you know, so. I think it's going to be good, and I decided to use a um, a wave washer. Of course, I welded it, and uh, it was in already, so eh, it didn't really destroy it. But uh, and then I got the wider nut because the other guy is a 14 millimeter head with a wider thing, so more surface area to hold that big ass piece right there. I mean, it's very rigid, you know. piston is, this guy is out, so it cocks and it holds it up, yeah, see how it goes all the way down, that way if it's welded, even if the nut came loose, it's not going anywhere, even if this nut fell out, it's welded and that nut would still be on, you know, one or the other, so, um, you know, I guess since you do something, any kind of modification like this, you, you check it for a few weeks to see, you know, if anything's moved or if it looks loose or anything like that. But ultimately, even like this, you know, the, the play is only in the pin there, you know. And look, I can't even, it's, um, I should be able to go further, but I guess, it, oh yeah, there you go. It just, it wasn't natural to go backwards now. Wait, why is that, oh, that's just the pin, the pin like I was saying. Yep, it's like a solid piece. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have any, any issues at all with this. So, I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to lube it up. i got to weld on this guy um, to, to make the shut off for the, uh, for the brake switch or the turn on point for the brake switch. I actually got a little rubber thing. I think it's going to work. Um, and that's it. I'm going to start putting it back together again uh, after that. i got to weld the uh, thing for the spring as well. Either i got to move that guy over, which is probably not feasible. It's either that. I'm just, I may just leave it there and put the spring there. I, I don't think it's going to stretch it that much more. I mean, it's not designed to really work on, a, on an angle, but I, I, just, I just don't think it's off that much to really make a difference. So I might just do that and rather than have it hit something else. You know, um, yeah, I think it'll be fine, actually. So, I'll see. See how I feel. Not too bad. I took a washer. Actually, it was a leftover piece like this that I cut in the hole. The th I had two of them. One was thicker because I changed the metal on the piece on the motor here in the back. But I um, took the leftover and I, I welded it. I took a screwdriver, pried it up while I hit it with a ball peen hammer. I can actually hit that left side a little bit more. Let's see. Oops. Bear with me. Basically, I stuck the screwdriver in, I pulled it to the side, and I. And I <laughs> bigger hole it, 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 it should be roughly in the same place I think it'll work fine so I decided to put a couple of tacks there because I think in real time you'd never be able to line that up it's one thing if you have one on one side and one on the other but uh, you know or, or either or you know like the, with the case of the uh, stick shift one this was the, the, the pin for it, it was this long so eh, you know putting in one and lining up is one thing but it really it's really a pain, like out of the car. I can only imagine in the car. So this one here, I'm going to leave loose, but I welded the the, the washer to it. So 
it's just easier to put. It's it's hard to line up all that stuff. So I was just fearing if it ever had to be done in the car, it would be a real headache. So I decided to do it that way, and uh, that'll make that part of the job easier. Um, God forbid if you have to go in there again. Okay, so I got a little um, package from AutoZone. Comes with a couple of different sizes of these rubber things to replace the one that's there. As you can see, might be a little bit bigger. I just made a bigger hole. So I made this bracket here, and I had to drill a hole, but it's it's extra thick metal. It's what I had. You don't have to go crazy, but I'm going to go from the other side and pull this through. But first, I got to weld it, obviously. I'm going to melt the rubber. And where are we now? Um, yeah, I got the spring on. If I show that to you already, I don't remember anymore. And I'm going to adjust that all the way in, weld it up to it, and then the adjustment will be back further. That way, it, just in case the rubber falls off, it will hit the uh, the bracket at fully um, adjusted. And um, if you ever had to change the rubber and make it fatter, it can always go back too then. Okay, so over here, I took everything out already, but I got a washer here to make it a little bit tighter. Uh, it's supposed to have some, but what the washer does is it keeps this like away from the motor, even though there's still some room to spare. I figured one washer is better than no washer. And then I realized my mistake over here. I just like welded it haphazardly, and I had to drill another hole in it and cut it off because I'm actually blocking a bolt hole that actually bolts it into the car. So now it's ready to be bolted in, and uh, I will take it from there and see what other problems I have. But that was the first one. All right. So... Fits really well. I had a big problem with this. What happened was this particular um, spline, it's not used all the way up here. It's really meant for the other shaft. And I couldn't get it on. I'm fighting with it. I had to actually put this on in the car and then put this one on here, which I didn't want to do, but it actually went, you know, pretty well. You know, it just caught wherever it needed a court because it has actually a wide tooth here so there's more adjustment you know uh this particular one has a wide tooth that'll catch it in any position it's bolted in and believe it or not the ac vents <laughs> it looks like one will go over the top and one will go over the bottom that's crazy and now i just got to get to the second half of this um and here's the brake i mean Looking at the brake and the gas, it's, I don't think it's terrible. Um, not sure if it's the brake pedal is too high. It should be in the same place that it was. That's the, the thing I made. I showed you before with the single rubber thing. Actually, you ended up getting a rubber thing in there. It's fucking doing so many fucking wires. Yep, see, it's touching. It's not really on center and yeah, not a big deal. But um I mean how it's almost like it's meant to be in a weird way. You know, we're so far so good. I've got to take a break though now. I got a few other things to do and then I'll get to the top half uh, another day. Alright, so just when just to give you an idea, when all is said and done, when all this is on, like eh, you don't even need a clamp technically. It's really right on the money. I have the bolts. I had to loosen the back bolts right now to get this to actually get in because I had to get past the plastic, you know. But it also, you know, generally speaking, if the column was all together, you'd want to put it in one piece as well. But I don't know if you could tell the difference between the gas pedal and the and the brake pedal. It's not really bad. And like I said, technically, you could you could. I mean, you'd have to do a lot of work to get it off again, but. It's something the way you can uh, you can go out with this. But, uh, right now with this bracket, it's it's really right on the money. And like I said, it 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 gives an opportunity to collapse if need be. It, it's really not necessary to even bolt it. It's the two bolts on the outside of one thing, but it's in the spline shaft. And you see, I, I can actually push it down. So. When you tighten the steering wheel, I guess it's gonna it's gonna push up against this, and uh, that will be 
okay. Um, but that gives a little bit of room for, you know, going down. And um, what else? Uh, yeah, and then the, the, the sleeve. I mean, once everything's bolted up, I don't think this thing is going anywhere. You know, it really... I can't believe how good this came out. Okay, so this is hilarious because he, he didn't even have the lower thing. It actually almost looks like there's more room now with, you know, for the lower one. But this one actually... Have this I just shoved this in like I said the bolts are loose but the, the air duct is there and it looks like it's just gonna go right around not, not even an issue you know I got I ordered a new uh, switch brake switch the old one is kind of like it got welded in it's, uh, it's almost like as if it got soldered in here you know I can't get it out I gotta use a pair of pliers or something but other than that I'm just, uh, I'm kind of amazed how well it came out, all things uh, aside. So, I guess uh, I'll make more videos when uh, I actually get it going and I finish this off, decide what I'm going to do, if I'm going to put a clamp there or not, of some sort. Um, either way, this was kick-ass, and uh, I think uh, as long as all the electrics work, it's going to be gonna be pretty darn good you know the big part was getting all this shit done you know and uh, in a certain sense I probably should have done the original the original um, column but like I said this one had a bad bearing at the back so I was like God forbid if you ever had to swap it back um, you know then the um, uh, what do you call it you know, it's intact, you know, other than the steering wheel. But now, we, you know, the, the, the new column we got didn't have any electrics on it other than the ignition switch. So, more things to do. Uh, but I, I got some other projects I got to work on. So, it'll be a little while before I have a, another video. But uh, I might get a little ambitious and I'll see what happens. But uh, you could probably get the good gist of uh, what was done here. And... Um, probably do something yourself all right guys take it easy okay I just want to make one last video um, to show you where I cut for the um, for the front um, shaft here that goes into the uh, the Honda one so this is the original Honda shaft the spline shaft that goes in okay and this was pretty much right here so basically you see there's a 45 and it ramps up to a bigger size that's where I cut it, okay? And on this one, on the original Festiva shaft here, I made this shaft equal the complete length of this. Exactly this reference right here, where this piece is double D goes. This is how long the original shaft was, okay? It's 15 and a quarter and like another 16th, so it's like, not even, it's like a 32nd, so it's like, 15 and I guess that would be uh, 932s. I believe that's what it was. So I use that as a reference point because when I was, you know, mating everything up, uh, you know, um, so that was that. But basically I cut it right where it ramped up here, where it just about started to go straight, like right on the money, right right after this, uh, the swoop up here. And the same thing here. And... We and I think you saw in the milling um, video that we uh, ground this one out and ground this one down. Oh, this one we gr we grounded the center of this one and we grounded um, this is the outside and this is the inside. So we ground ground that in, put it in, and then I made it so that and and what when you cut these both off, you have you have to go in a half inch. So what I did is we went in a half inch and bored it out. It doesn't matter what size it really is, but you want to make it so obviously one isn't too thin and too thick because they're close to the same size, these two. The original one, the, the, the Festiva one, is actually a little bit bigger than the Toyota one. So I had to ground this one down more and ground this one just enough. I had more than a hundred thousandths wall on both of them. But what I did is I took three quarters, like right here, is three quarters of an inch ground down three quarters and ground into this one only a half inch okay so that when you bottom it out you have 
a quarter inch of machined um, machined uh, metal that you see. And that's what I filled it up with weld. As opposed to welding on top and butt welding it. I, I mean, I got obviously I got weld over the surface, but this allowed me to go deep inside and contact all points when I welded it. You know, similar to what they did here, except this was a really good job. <laughs> but that's basically, uh, I wanted to add that in of how I um, did this this uh, secondary shaft here. Or, I don't know if you want to call it a primary shaft or whatever, but that worked out. So um, I will uh, update as soon as I can. And uh, I thought I think you have a lot to work with right now. It was amazing how everything went together. It really was a pretty, pretty kick-ass uh, project that I did. I think um, uh, people are going to start putting uh, power steering in their Festivas so their girlfriends can drive it. <laughs> That's why I did this. All right. Thanks.